Hi, welcome to GP.NET Tutorials. My name is Bahrudin and this is the lesson 4 of GP.NET Tutorial. In this lesson, we are going to talk about how to create and train GP model in GP.NET. In previous lesson, we downloaded the data, concrete slump test, and loaded into the GP.NET by using import data dialog and prepare everything for model creation and training. In this lesson, we are going to set up everything before training model, which includes setting terminal set, function set, GP parameters, and termination criteria before model start to be trained. Once the training process is started, we can see how the model can be evaluated online, which means monitoring model performance during training phase. Also, we can see how to stop training if we realize the model is overfitted or the model is going to from direction. So let's open the gp.net and start from the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we loaded the data and prepared the data for model creation. Before uh, we create the model, which is GP model of concrete slump, we define each column and say that uh, the first several column will be uh, input parameters, which means that terminal set is automatically created by these columns, cement, slag, fly ash, water, SP, coas aggregation, and fine aggregation. The output variable automatically is selected to be slump and this column will be model output. So once we create the model, the terminal set from the data set is already created. So let's go to the model we created previously and now we can see the function set. There are many primitive functions gp.net support. For this model, we will just select the first four operations, which, which are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Also, for each uh, function, there is a several attributes. One of the attributes we should pay attention is white. White is a attribute which can um, provide a better selection for certain operation. Currently, all four operations have the same whites, which is equal to one. In case I want that addition operation, will have much more probability to be selected than others, I can just change white value from the one which is placed here. For example, I will put the five. Once I change one into five, I will press the update row, which means update selected row. And now the addition operation has white five. This means that in the function set, which consists of four operations, the addition operation will have five times more probability to be selected than the rest of operation. It's pretty easy. So let's go further. Once we define the function set, we go to the GP parameters. Now we have uh, all parameters which can be changed or selected during that model. The first parameter is population size, which is usually 500. The second parameter is a fitness function. We can, among, we can select several fitness functions from the absolute error, mean absolute error, root mean square error, etc. For now, we will we'll select the root mean square error. The initialization method is very important in genetic programming and gp.net support all three, the all three initialization method. Let's select half and half. Then we go to the selection 
group of GP parameters. The first parameter is elitism, which usually is one or two or few first few chromosomes. Let it be one. The selection method, we can select fitness proportionate, rank and tournament selection. Let's select rank selection with rank value, for example, 1.8. We can check protected operation. This means that uh, during the building model, all operations will be protected operation. For example, in case of uh, we selected four operations which are safe except division as you know if you divide by zero you will get error in that case instead of using pure division we will use a protected division which in gp.net is defined if the model encounters division by zero it, it returns one beside the terminal set which is generated from the input data. Additionally, we can uh, expand the terminal set uh, with random constants. For this model, we can define, for example, two constants, which will be randomly generated from the interval of 0 to 1. Tree structure level is actually is the how chromosome will be generated initially and, will, and how chromosome will be generated after operation case of maximum three level. For initialization, the maximum level will be five. And for the operation level, let's say we, we can set up to seven. This means that the, during, for example, crossover, the maximum level of maximum three level will be seven. Every chromosome which will have more than seven levels will be cut off and regenerated up to level 7. Also, we can set up a brood size for operations. Currently, a brood size is 2, which means that each operation will be executed 2 times per operation. And a root node is defined only for classification problems since we are dealing uh, right now with the regression problem the root node should be known also the last thing we should consider is a type of processing by default gp.net support multicore i mean gp.net support parallel gp which speed up significantly a searching process okay now that we defined a function set terminal set and GP parameters, we can go to the run tab page and set up termination criteria before training process is started. Currently, GP.NET support termination criteria based on the generation number and based on the fitness. This actually generation number tells you that you will perform 500 iterations and uh, after 500 iterations, the, the searching process or training process will be stopped. Otherwise, you can define fitness-based cr termination criteria, with, uh, which uh, means that um, involve GP searching process until the fitness of the best chromosome be greater than specified value. Also, uh, in case the searching process find exact solution, GP.NET will automatically stop. Okay, once we define the termination criteria, we can press run, which starts the training process. Before we run, we just take a look at charts, which are placed on the run page. The low chart shows training data, which also during the training process will show the, the GP model, which will be colored in blue. On that way, you can see how GP model uh, uh, determine data and also on the on the upper chart the reader can see the maximum and average fitness during the evolution. Let's run the, the training process. Now you can see how uh, our GP model is close to the training data and also on the, on the upper chart, you will see how maximum fitness and average fit during the evolution. 
during the evolution or during the training that we can go to the solution page and see how our model looks like in context of tree structure as you can see there is a there is a tree structure of the best uh, found chromosome currently and also we can see a performance of that model by clicking on the model evolution for example last model found before we press model evaluation uh, has a correlation coefficient uh, 0.7 and also we can uh, see the performance of the testing and training data if we want how model uh, describe the testing data we can go to validation tab page and see how the models describe the testing data as you can see the red line is a testing data set which as you can see um, is a little uh, far from the in, on some places from the blue line 